Last night, I got an education. I was shared some wisdom and I hope to add to that wisdom and bring some of it to everybody else. But one of the things I found out last night, and it came by way of a complaint from the Walpuri people in the Northern Territory, Central Australia, and it was about this man, Mark McMurtry. And they were extremely offended by the fact that this man that has not been adopted into their tribe and has no right is using a skin name, their skin name. And they are highly offended by it. Now he should not be using this because how does a Thorowall elder now you look at Thorowall, it's New South Wales. How does a Thorowall elder end up with a, a name from the Northern Territory, from the Walpuri people? How do you end up being adopted in a tribe in New South Wales? And here's the Walpuri all the way up here northern New South Wales where he is or wherever the Thorowall is here so he's supposed to be a Thorowall elder but he's got a Walpuri skin name so I'm even questioning the fact whether he's actually been adopted into any tribe if any of it's legitimate and I actually bring that up because someone advised me the other day that um, Bina Pownor, whose real name is Gregory, apparently he was adopted into the tribe and he was given the name Binum, which means something to do with ear. But the connotation of giving him that name was he needs to listen. <laughs> so... He needs to close his mouth and open his ears. But he didn't like Binum. He became Bina. Now that's Kabbalistic Hebrew, which has nothing at all to do with the honour that was bestowed upon him in being adopted into the tribe. That's an insult as well, to misrepresent. Your name is, your tribal name is not spelt like that, Bina. It's Binum. A little bit like Gunnam down here. Anyway, that's off subject. So what you have to understand, Gunnam, is that uh, you understand the law, the tribal law. You know Central Australian tribes. You know the expectations and also the consequences of not following their tribal law. You have taken, stolen the skin name of the Jakamara from the Walparu people. They want it back. You cannot have it. It is not yours and you can never use it. This is more um, a name that is not really for public consumption. There are things that are private to all people and the skin name is a right of their being to be kept private. There are a lot that will not give out their skin name because someone else will take it and use it and they have stolen their identity. And this is how gravely tribal law looks at taking someone else's skin name Mark McMurtry, you have taken someone else's skin name. You have no right to it. And those that do want you to stop using it. And if you don't stop using it, this is tribal law. It has every validity on this country as much as the law courts. You know this. And you also know that there are rules and regulations governing the ability to become sovereign, 
we'll get into that in a little bit but one thing I want to show you just hang on now Benyini Nyini or Mark McMurtry left me a few comments today usual stuff you know I'm not going to give him too much attention but the thing that um, like I put it to him that he had stolen a skin name and this is his response as for stealing a skin name laugh my ass off bring that to uh, Gunham Mark McMurtry this is tribal law you have broken their laws you are accountable to that you have stolen a skin name that doesn't belong to you you have no right to it and ultimately the um, punishment is just as enforceable and valid as the law courts here outside of land titles and tribal boundaries but he dismisses this stealing a skin name by thinking that it comes from well I'm assuming he's talking about Rhyme Earth Healer or and Alan Hamer the guy that I've done videos on in the past that well clearly he hasn't watched because he doesn't know how I feel about him <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't say I'm talking to him <laughs> getting information off him so anyway um, it's not funny what he's done here I mean he's just gone on he's in the previous comment he's had a go at uh, Jenny now down here he's calling people malig malignant cancerous twats like Dave Vids Vincent and uh, Jenny and Dave all of these comments that he's making and everything on you I hope you're keeping screenshots on them because yeah we're gonna add this together once I get the main charges going I think we should all get our heads together, meet up, hey? <laughs> It'd be nice to meet uh, the, the the people that leave me comments on the, the YouTube. So, um, and we can uh, go for a, a mass defamation because, you know, there's certainly, uh, you know, it's not only you two that he likes to pick on, but there's other people as well that have told me that they've got the same toxic comments. And, um, well... This man here, and I use that term liberally, fat beer gutty, um, wants to call me deluded. At least I can stand in my own self and in my own truth. I do not have to make up a fake name like Max Egan, and I do not have to steal a skin name and dishonor the people that I stole it from and break their law. You've broken tribal law, Gunnam. You, you just, you, and you tell me that bring it on. It's not me that's going to bring it on, mate. You have offended the Walpuri. And what do you think that's going to do? Hmm? Do you think that they will bring it on? Do you want to invite that? What about their neighbours? They don't like you very much either. There's a lot of tribes that don't actually like you for what you've done to their tribe and their people for the division, for the deceit, for the manipulation. You take advantage of people where English isn't their first language. You just at every point use every trick in a um, motivational speaker's or salesman's sales pitch or whatever you use to charm sweet talk and bullshit but the number of towns and places that you've been run out of because you can't deliver up what you promise how many places have you promised sovereignty to I've heard old Grevillea drummed you out of town too now I as I said I received a bit of an education last night. I'm only going to share a little bit of it with you now because I don't want to make it a really long video. I will get into that in other videos. So I've brought up uh, the OSTF, the Original Sovereign Tribal Federation. I've also brought up the fact that it's not 
a legitimate, legitimately recognised Aboriginal organisation, council, tribunal or anything. Now here's a couple of things that I can tell you that because of the source it's come from, I trust this source and I'm going to present as fact. I was informed about what is required for someone to be able to claim sovereignty. The first thing that you need to be able to do is have your tribal lands intact. If you do not have tribal lands intact, you cannot get sovereignty. Now, another little thing too is if you've got more than 20% bitumen on that land, you cannot have sovereignty on that land. It's a reason why Sydney and other places like that, cities can't be claimed because how much land can you actually see? It's bitumen, concrete, buildings. There's just too much that isn't land. So if more than 20% is um, bitumen, you cannot claim sovereignty on the land. But let's get back to the other aspect of where if you do not have your tribal lands intact, you cannot claim sovereignty. Now here it creates a little bit of a difficulty. Mark McMurtry represents himself as a Thurawal elder. As I've shown you, Thurawal is New South Wales, further New South Wales. Now, Nightcap is Nightcap on Minjimbal because they've got Minjimbal elders that have joined in to go for the sovereignty and treaty with the tribe. But there's only one little catch with all that. Uh, it's Bunjalung country. It's not Minjimbal. So you cannot claim sovereignty under Minjimbal because it is not their land and the Bunjalung can't claim sovereignty on any of their land because the Minjimbal have taken some of their tribal lands and they are not intact. Then we look at a further little fact about that Mark McMurtry is not anyone that is of a tribe. It is even questionable if he's made up his name that he's made up being adopted into a tribe because if he was adopted as a Thorowall elder he would have got a Thorowall skin name. Not a Walpuri one in the Northern Territory. A New South Wales Thorowall skin name. But he didn't. So how is it that he hasn't got a Thorowall skin name? Because I think that Thorowall Elder is just something he typed on the title and he made up a name that he liked. Just like he made up Benyini Nyini because he liked it. Hey. Eh? Can't you just be the person that you are? Can't you accept living in your own skin that you've got to pretend or try and be something that you're not? This is what's wrong with the fakers in the world. They're pretending that they have the truth and the answers and freedom, <laughs> yet they're trapped in the, their own jails of their own creation. They can't even stand in their own truth. I'm Kerry, just Kerry, will always be. That was my birthright, my name, my connection. That is my skin name. And I don't need to take up any other name because, well, I walk my talk. I own my truth. The only reason I'd need to take up another name is to hide from the reality I've created in this life, in my name, my real name. So I'm going to hide behind a fake name and a fake reality that I've manufactured so that I can feel good and safe in 
Oh, I'm not that nasty person after all. Well, sometimes you've got to do self-reflection, because we all can be nasty, you know. But this Mark McMurtry has been a busy little boy over the last 10 years. He's been pissing a lot of people off. He's been getting kicked out of places all over Australia. He's been causing division, not only between the tribes, but between the people in the tribes. With his bullshit, he's just going in there, spinning it, and vulnerable people are being lured in by his mesmerizing sales pitch. And you cannot blame innocence for the deliberate deceit of those that set out to take advantage of it. Now, Mark McMurtry has got a few things to answer for in a lot of the tribes around Australia. A lot of them aren't very happy. Some of them, you know, you cannot set foot on their lands ever again. Or you'll be pushing up daisies. I mean, you've, you've already offended enough and now you've belittled the fact that the Walpuri have said, stop using a stolen skin name. For in all essence, it is identity fraud. That's what it is. And the tribal law is valid, Mark McMurtry. You know this. And the law will be followed out if you don't listen. Stop using the name. Remove it. Stop representing yourself as a Jakumara from the Walpuri people. You are dishonouring them and you are breaking their law. But I wanted to uh, explain a little bit more about the OSTF. In talking to people that are more personally involved and understanding of what's going on, you get the impression, very much so, that it would be so much easier to start off a conversation to say who the OSTF are by mentioning a group we already know who you know, all about, BLM. BLM in America. We all know how they have caused their activists, terrorists, their domestic terrorists that are creating divisions, perpetuating myths of, look, you are a victim as long as you see yourself as a victim. You are in charge of your life. The soon, the second you see yourself in charge of your life. It's called self-responsibility, autonomy, knowing yourself, who you are. And it's not something that anybody else can give you. You have to discover that with, from within yourself. But these people are using these key features, emotional triggers to draw in people to the cause that ultimately, um, I don't know what the OSTF does about as far as taking donations, but if it's like every other scam that I've seen running, they'd be having somewhere where you can just hand over as much money as you want to help them fight the true fight. Well, the true fight, this domestic terrorist group that believes in no violence, well, we've already seen that um, Adrian Brannock's a hypocrite and can't even live up to the words he spooks about that. But what about this guy here and the OSTF? No. Nah. They're into the same intimidatory, harassing, threatening tactics as what all these other thugs are that, oh, you're not saying what I don't like, you know, so um, I'm going to get a lawyer on to you, I'm going to send someone round to threaten you, I'm going to do all these things to you, you know, if you don't shut your mouth or agree with me. Well, I tell you what, if my son can't make me shut my mouth, after all this time of him telling me that I should agree with him, <laughs> Nobody else has got Buckley's. Buckley's none, you know. OSTF is a domestic terrorism organisation 
and it should be recognised as that. One of them heading it up has stolen a skin name from a tribe that didn't even adopt him. <laughs> and then, well, you know, since he started 10 years ago with his OSTF, he's also started with all his stupid actions in court. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you'd say that I brought up the fact that I think the courts might be getting a little bit pissed off with him. <laughs> oh, they got more than pissed off with him. Because I've been hearing it from quite a few different people about his efforts in England to try and um, set himself up as king of the tribes, essentially. 54 tribes, and he wanted to be in charge of all of them. And he got kicked out of court, you know. I mean, who they all laugh at him. <laughs> but because he comes up with these such outlandish ideas and he thinks that because he goes into court and he says something a particular way that his brand of stupid is actually going to make any sense to even even a bra the brain of a judge. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, mate. Most of these people are a bit of a mind fuck. You just can't understand where they're getting those thoughts from. It's like, wow, what planet are you on? But anyway, so after he's gone to England, like he's had um, in the last 10 years, or actually more from 2000, and 2000 to 2007, he's had at least six, seven, maybe eight cases. And, you know, where he says they had good results, Oh, good results. He's only relying on the fact that no one's actually ever going to read them. Seriously, people, you should. When someone says, oh, we won this, go and have a look. You need to go and have a look. Especially with people like him, because then you'll start asking yourself, well, hey, I just heard you tell this story, and I'm reading a completely different one. Wow, what a salesman. What a bullshit artist. So he's pissed off the Australian courts for, you know, the last decade. But going to England was the last straw. Yeah, it comes down in the Australian courts that Mark McMurtry cannot submit anything else to the Australian courts anywhere in Australia. So in other words, you know, even if he wanted to be able to take up something in the courts that had been validly done to him, he can't because he's banned from making any kind of applications to the court because he bothered them too much with his bullshit. Then he went and bothered the court in England and they said, you know what, you're not going to bother us again. Not here nor there. <laughs> But they have made an exclusion that if anyone wants to take Mark McMurtry to court, you can take him to court. So, well, that's that was good news to hear because that's where I intend to take him and all these others. Well, not me. I will put it all together so that it can be taken that way. But, um, yeah, it's getting there. Very much coming together. And as you peel back the layers of these shonky dealers, you actually find that, well, they've, they've left a trail of victims, most of them. And look, even Pete Evans, how many failed ventures has he got under his belt now? How many lost investors has he got? I mean, is there anything that any of these people um, have succeeded in? other than looking after a few select asses and getting rich off taking what doesn't belong to them. And you know, just like the uh, BLM infiltrated a lot of different organisations uh, and corrupted them, likewise, the OSTF has infiltrated and corrupted a lot of the ones here in Australia. And it's not easy when you've got, and I'm sorry, but essentially to the tribes, to the ancestors, to the, the skin names, this man is an outsider. And anyone that is tribal, 
you're taking advice from an outsider. You know, there are many names in many different languages for someone that comes from a, from outside. It's one thing that you may listen, but to give up your own self, your own identity, your own culture, your own heritage to follow this clearly active alcoholic. <laughs> Look at that beer gut. And that honk is only going to get bigger. It's going to nearly match Max Egan soon. Sorry, sidetrack thought. I just looked over and I saw his gut and I thought, wow. The only time I've ever had one that big was when I was just about to give birth. And that's my excuse. <laughs> now, I've become aware of two other individuals that are involved with the OSTF. That's David Coles and Robbie Mills. I haven't found out much about them, but um, I'd paint them with the same brush as Mark McMurtry. They are not being honest. They are not telling you the truth. If they are offering you sovereignty of any kind, has Mark McMurtry told you what I said just before? That you need to have your tribal lands intact. This nightcap on Minjimbal can never be sovereign because Minjimbal are on Bunjalung land. There is no tribal land that is intact. And you need to start listening to those that are not this outsider. You need to start listening to the wisdom of those that have been repeating themselves for a long time. You need to start waking up to the wisdom that is within your own tribes and communities. You have access to this information and you have been told it. Now all you need to do is wake up to it. You are tribal. Stand in that proud. Do not hide behind the skirts of some little fat beer gut. Letting him tell you how you should be and thinking that he's got any answers for you. He hasn't even got answers for himself. Do you not know that before sovereignty comes autonomy, self-awareness, self-control, self-responsibility? And in that, the relationships with your community and everything on it, then you can become sovereign on the land and make your own flag and a stake for your home where you will make your own family and carry on the skin name. You do not need an outsider to tell you who you are. You were born knowing. All you need to do now is remember. And if you need help remembering, there are the ones that can help you. You know this. Look to Central Australia. You know that the Walpuri are not the only ones that can help. Listen to the wisdom. Because you can make a difference here. There are already Aboriginals at NICAP that are going to be going down with this ship. They have signed documents. They are as involved as anybody else now. They've put their names on it and they would have to do a lot of explaining to get themselves out of it. Not that there's anything to take off them because essentially the land was supposed to be gifted to the Minjimbal even though it's Bunjalung country. I mean, I just see insult after insult as far as disrespect. I mean, it's like, you know, me walking into the people's house next door and saying, right, I'm going to live here now. There are certain respects that you have to take into consideration. I mean, we're all on this planet together. We need to learn to live together instead of all of us saying, oh, I'm going to set up my little sovereign shit on the hill here and, you know, that's it. These people are milking both sides of the system. 
getting all the government benefits and hiding anything they earn as donations or behind incorporated associations and trust accounts where there is no ability to monitor any monies going through. There's a lot of things that I could tell you that the business activities that they're getting up to, but yeah, that's for another video. I've probably said, this is probably long enough, just a reminder, Mark McMurtry, that you need to um, remove the skin name that you have stolen. It is an offence under tribal law, and you will be held accountable. And I'm just passing on a message. So ultimately, you are given the opportunity to listen. I know you're a stupid dumbass and you won't, but that will be on you not me and it will be on you <laughs> literally i think oh i think that might hurt a little so i'm going to leave that up here i wanted to get more into explaining about tribal australia a lot of australians are very ignorant as i was and there are things that I am permitted to share with others. And of course, like any respect to any culture, that some things are shared only on a personal level and never to be said publicly. So I will share with you what I can. And out of respect for, uh, well, I would not share it anyway. Because sometimes, you know, it's like you don't give matches to a kid playing with dynamite, do you? Well, you don't give them dynamite in the first place. But if, if they're doing something silly, um, you don't give them the ability to um, make it worse. <laughs> and that's essentially what giving some knowledge to ignorant people can actually do. The road to hell is paved with good intention. So, and history is also full of the example of what, you, what damage it does to give information to people when they are not ready to use it responsibly. And uh, that's said and done. I'm going to leave it at that and I'll catch you next time.